Today I want to do a bit of analysis on the way of the Shadow Monk. Starting off at level 3, we get Shadow Arts. Shadow Arts is a sick ability. So what it's going to do is first off give us a cantrip, Minor Illusion. Minor Illusion is a great cantrip, so we're happy to have it. But it also is going to give us a bunch of other spells that we can cast for two key points. And overall, I'd say their value for two key points is pretty, pretty high. We have Pass Without Trace, we have Dark Vision, we have Silence, and we have Darkness. Now starting off with Dark Vision, I would say that with a character who wants to be in Dim Light and Darkness as often as this, it's going to be really important that we have Dark vision and we really don't want to be spending two of our key points to make sure we have dark vision so i'd say this is the one that's going to be least used it could still be used to help out our allies and i suppose if you did a shadow monk without dark vision which i think is a mistake then it would be applied quite often but as far as my analysis goes i'd say this is the one that's going to be used the least now next up we have silence silence is a pretty cool spell because it, it nerfs spellcasters pretty hard but it's only in an area so it's going to be kind of interesting because you run up on a, a wizard saying you use your action to cast silence now now they might be able just to run away from you and then start doing their spells again. So that really suggests that we want the control option. And I think the best of those control options is gonna be Sentinel. So we run up to the wizard, we cast Silence. Now they need to run out, but now it gives us a chance and a pretty good chance to hit them with our attack. And then Sentinel stops them in place. Darkness is very similar, except it can move with us. And, it, and it's also really good at debuffing spellcasters, but it also can just debuff anybody. However, Darkness does cause problems because we don't, however, see through our own magical darkness. So we have to do either something customized in our build to fix that or darkness goes way down in value though I will say my favorite way to use darkness is actually just to get a tongue piercing and then cast it on your tongue piercing close your mouth when you don't want darkness because it's a closed container and then open it when you do depending on how your DM rules the action economy of opening and closing your mouth that can either solve all of your problems with darkness on the really nice DM end, or it's going to sol solve a lot of your problems on the mean DM end. the premiere of these spells has got to be pass without trace though one pass without trace can be a fight winning spell if if you get an ambush on an enemy and your whole team gets surprised because of how powerful Pass Without Trace is at enabling a team's stealth, then your whole team just got action surge, essentially. It's gonna be really, really powerful and it's just gonna win fights outright. On the flip side, not every fight is going to be an ambush. And in that case, it's not going to do anything as far as your combat is concerned. It is, however, fantastic at infiltration missions. Way of Shadow Monk is specifically tailored, designed to do infiltration missions where you don't get into combat. And Pass Without Trace is really the beginning of that. We'll get into more later, but this is the beginning. Now, as the Way of Shadow Monk, you're probably really going to want to pick up Thieves' tools from your background and become a roguelike. So if I were to rank them, I'd say Pass Without Trace is the best. Silence is probably the second best on average. Darkness is probably third best, then Dark Vision. Now those change based on your build, but overall I'd say that's kind of the general statement. At level six, we're gonna get Shadow Step. As a bonus action, we can step from any dim light or darkness into another area of dim light or darkness that we can see. The range is up to 60 feet, and after we make that teleport, we have advantage on our first attack. Where a rogue can jump out of the shadows and just drop a whole bunch of B6s of damage, we kind of jump out of the shadows and tickle people. We don't do crazy amounts of damage with our attack, so this, this advantage doesn't feel that amazing. Advantage is directly related to the quality of attack. If it's high quality attack, advantage is high quality. If it's low quality attack, it's whatever. And we kind of fall into that whatever category. Where a rogue is going to assassinate off of just pure damage, how a shadow monk's going to assassinate is we're going to pop out of the shadows, target one creature, hopefully it's alone, and we're just going to try and stun lock them. That's our best bet. If you manage to stun them, then continue next turn. Keep hitting them until they're stunned, until they're dead, and then get out of there. If you run out of key points, you go step into the shadows and vanish. And that's kind of how this acts as an assassin, so it's more of a stun-locking assassin. And if you fail that, you just kind of dip. So it's just a different kind of assassin and a weirder kind. And it does have a weird mechanic with the dim light to dim light because you really have to be asking your DM all the time, like, what is the light like in this situation? And if it's bright light, you're just kind of boned. But in the circumstances that it is dim light or darkness, bonus action, 60-foot teleport for free is incredible. So this one's really hard to evaluate because it goes from being incredible, giving you fantastic mobility, to being absolutely useless. Where this really shines for me is is on infiltration missions. This is awesome to just leap from shadow to shadow and never even interact with people. You just kind of leap around, get to where you need to go, grab it, leap out. Like the mobility this gives you is insane, especially when combined with Pass Without Trace. At level 11, we get Cloak of Shadows. Cloak of Shadows lets us go invisible as long as we're in dim light or darkness and we stay invisible until we attack, cast a spell, or walk into brightness. Again, this is all about our lighting. So it's kind of weird for the DM. If we want to make our shadow monks useful, we have to have dim light. And if we're in bright light, you can pretty much just nerf them into the ground because they can't do what they want to do. And this is another example of us 
being really good at not taking the fight. Like it's advantageous for us during an infiltration mission, never to attack, never to cast a spell, never to walk into bright light. What we want to do is go invisible, teleport around, unlock doors, find what we need to find, grab it and go. And I'd say that's where the wave shadow monk really shines is having a mission outside of combat. And again, this feature goes from anywhere of being like pretty dang good to being absolutely useless. And that's kind of an interesting thing with the Shadow Monk is you really don't know where you're gonna fall on that skill. At level 17, we get Opportunist. Opportunist allows us to make a reaction attack against somebody who's attacking someone within five feet of us. So it's similar to Sentinel, a little bit worse. And I think there's gonna be a really good chance we have Sentinel all the way back at level four, which makes this feature completely obsolete. The reason I think Sentinel is a pretty common take for Shadow is again, to keep them in our darkness, to keep them in our silence. So I think overall, especially for a 17th level feature, opportunist is extremely underwhelming. That kind of leaves us a picture of what we are as a shadow monk. We have features that make us fantastic infiltrators in certain environments, and we can have a, a pretty big power scale as far as our usefulness and utility goes, depending on the environment. In the right environment, we're teleporting, we're invisible, and we can move past whole armies without being seen, and we feel really stealthy, and that's really cool. Despite that divide, there's always shadow arts, and shadow arts is really king of the Shadow Monk. And so that's really what we want to be making our build around. And all my other features analysis, I like to break down whether this is a wisdom or dex based build. This is definitely a dex based build if we're comparing the two. Shadow Monk really doesn't lean into the wisdom at all. And that means we could be a Shadow Monk Archer. There are viable builds for that. That means we could be kind of what you would consider your basic monk where you can get into melee distance. But there's also strength based build. The only subclasses we can do strength based monks are ones that don't rely on their wisdom. And the Shadow Monk, oddly, is one of those. I'll get into a deeper analysis there, but what I'm trying to express is the broad range that shadow monks can give you. You have these archers, you have these dex based fighters, you have these strength based fighters. Where we fall off completely is the wisdom based monk. That is not a thing for shadow monks. So if I were to break down how I feel about shadow monk, I think their potential is incredible. Let's say you have the perfect DM for a shadow monk. It means you're gonna be spending a lot of time in dim light. It means you're gonna be spending a lot of time doing infiltration missions to avoid combat altogether. Maybe your DM's really lenient about letting you get these surprise rounds with pass without trace. Awesome, you're gonna feel incredible. But on the flip side, if you're in a campaign with bright light all the time. You're going to feel garbage. If the DM is setting up fights so you're not getting ambushes, yeah, you're not going to feel great. But there's this wide area between feeling amazing as a Shadow Monk and feeling garbage as a Shadow Monk. And a lot of it is reliant on the DM. I do love the flavor of Shadow Monk though, and I want to push people to play them, but I do think it's necessary to have a discussion with your DM about where this campaign's taking place and what you, you should expect with lighting and what you should expect with surprise rounds. These are kind of important questions for a Shadow Monk to ask because it can be the difference between you loving your character and you feeling like your character is worthless. Now, this has been my take on the Shadow Monk features. I'd love to hear if you guys felt I missed anything or if there's some builds I should be aware of. Let me know in the comments down below. Also, we have a Patreon if you want to join to support the channel as well as getting early access videos and Patreon exclusive videos. Go ahead and go check it out. But other than that, hope you have yourselves an amazing day. You guys are awesome and we love you lots and we'll see you on the next one. Peace!